The Seminole Wars are remembered today as one of the bloodiest and longest lasting wars in American and Seminole history. The people of the Everglades and runaway slaves that fought beside them laid their lives on the line for peace. At the recently discovered Loxahatchee Battleground in Jupiter, Florida, spectators and reenactors come together to learn about and memorialize those who fought and lost their lives for freedom. This place is a place of beauty with all the trees they got here. And it's getting to be known. It was a big thing. Battles were fought here. Men died on both sides. And it's a terrible thing, but that's just the way it is. The Second Seminole War began when a Seminole hunting party near Fort Loxahatchee was fired upon. Seminole farmers heard this gunfire, grabbed their weapons, and joined the fight to protect their land we had a chance to speak to an archaeologist about the Loxahatchee Battleground. I became interested in this site really back in my teens when I found out there were two battles were fought in Palm Beach County. So we worked very hard to try to find the battles of Loxahatchee. Uh, we found um, some artifacts here in 1991. We realized that this park was dynamic in, in many aspects. Uh, it was more than just a military battlefield. It was the burial ground for thousands of years of Native Americans. These soldiers have been sent here by their generals to move us from Florida. We will not go. This is the last little place we have come to, the deep swamps. And now we will fight till the bitter end. We will not leave Florida. We're going to clean them out of here. We're going to send them to their happy hunting ground and we're going to send them out west because we're ready to clean this place out. They're coming yonder. We got to go. We're going. Today there's so much excitement. There's so much tension in the air. Everyone is excited and yes, we are afraid. But what we're not afraid of, we're not afraid of going to fight for what we believe in. We symbols will not leave our land. This is our land, Florida. Seminoles treat us like slaves, but slaves in a different manner. We share our food, we share our homes, we share our cultures. And without their lands, we don't have a place to go. That's why we came to Florida. That's why we're living with the Seminoles today. The Seminole harbored hundreds of black runaway slaves who had escaped from plantations, and black slaves who had served in Spanish fighting forces. The slaves became allies with the Seminoles and helped them fight in the Seminole Wars. These slaves were called Black Seminoles. The Seminoles fought because they were being pushed out of their settled home, and the slaves fought to be free. Today we've come to honor those who died here on this battlefield. This year is a landmark year, it's the 175th anniversary. It coincides with the 500th anniversary of Ponce de Leon's landing here in, in Florida, his being discovered by Native people. This is a good beginning on the Dr. Martin Luther King weekend to remember the American government called it Seminole Wars. For the Seminoles, this was Seminole peace that was being disturbed here and being uh, defended. What's interesting is this the two battles of Loxahatchee were lost. There was a, no idea where the location was for 100 years. And about 15 years ago, uh, several of us began to find evidence of, that it was right here under our own noses in our own backyard in Palm Beach County. It's a great history. It goes back to 1838 during the Seminole Wars, which the Second Seminole War was the longest, bloodiest, most costly Indian war in American history, costing more than $20 million, more than the American Revolution. This is the 18th year that we've done the Seminole Maroon program here at Loxhatchee River Battlefield Park. We found the battlefield back around 1992, 1991, somewhere in there 
and it's been a 20-year battle to save this land for historical preservation. This spot here on the Loxahatchee River has many burial sites dating back to two, 3,000 years ago to more modern Seminole burials and even the burials of the United States Army and Tennessee Volunteer Troops that were here in the Battle of Loxahatchee in January 1838. We came out here to the park today to learn more about the Seminole Indians and the battlefield park here and it's been a very, very enjoyable day. I would encourage anyone who is uh, interested in history, especially the history of the Seminole Indians, to come out here and uh, experience this. The Loxahatchee Battleground is a sacred land where the blood of thousands was shed. Some say that you can actually feel the spirit of those who fought and died almost 200 years ago. We represent the everyman Seminole. In our case, we were off at our farms, we were working. We heard gunfire, we grabbed our weapons, and we came to fight for our freedom again. So as representatives, as reenactors, as historians on the growth of the Seminole Nation and the state of Florida, that's what we're here to educate you to and to educate ourselves. Many of the Seminoles survived by moving deep into the Everglades. Miccosukee native Michael Frank said, it was told by the Creator to his people to go into a sacred island in the Everglades, and there they would be safe. He also said that his elders could see the troops moving through the swamp, but were never seen themselves. The Everglades is still home to the Miccosukee tribe.